I want to start this course by giving you a proof of the fundamental theorem of algebra using the notion of winding numbers. Now you may have seen something like this in a course on complex analysis, um, which is fine, uh, but hopefully the proof I'm going to give you will make it clear that there's no actual complex analysis involved in the proof, and the notion of winding numbers is somehow purely a topological thing. So what does the theorem say? It says any non-constant polynomial over the complex numbers has a root. In other words, in other words, if I give you a polynomial expression like this. then there exists um, an x in the complex numbers such that p of x is 0. So I should say has a complex root, complex polynomial has a complex root, and here n should be bigger than or equal to one in order for this to be a non-constant polynomial otherwise there's just a constant term so for the proof let's suppose we have a complex polynomial that has no complex root and then we'll prove that its degree n is equal to zero so assume there is no x in c such that P of x equals zero, then we'll prove the degree of the polynomial is zero. And there's this this number n, the biggest power of z. So the idea of the proof is we will consider the circle of radius r. in the complex numbers, this is some r. So these are the, po the points on this circle are the ones of the form r e to the i theta for some theta. And we're going to apply the polynomial p to all these points. And that was going to give us another circle over here somewhere. And I'll draw it in red. And it might not be a circle, but it'll be a loop. So there's red loop, and there's, there's the set of points p r e to the i theta that you get by applying the polynomial to all these guys. But the key thing is this red loop completely avoids the point zero at the origin because we're assuming there's no point in the domain which maps to the point zero. So this is a loop in the space C minus the origin. Now, when R equals zero, what loop do we get? Right, if we take very very small circle going down to zero radius what we're going to get over here is a point just r of zero sorry p of zero which is not equal to zero it's some other point but it's it's just one point so we get the constant loop zero. When r is very large, much much bigger than zero, we, well, we don't quite know what we get, but we approximately expect 
to get. For the set of all points r to the n e to the i n theta, as theta varies, why is that? Well, because the polynomial it's got this z to the n term at the front and when when the radius of z is very large that has much bigger radius than any of the other terms that term dominates in this series this is approximately equal to z to the n for large radii But what does this circle look like? What does this loop look like? Right, this has got very large radius r to the n, and as theta varies, e to the i n theta wraps around the unit circle direction n times. So it looks something like this if n were equal to 3. So this is supposed to be really large radius. Okay, so for small circles we get something very close to this point p0 and actually when r equals 0 we get just a constant loop at p0 and for very large radii we get this loop that winds n times around the origin. But there's a whole family of loops in between as r varies from 0 up to very very large so there's a whole family of red loops, starting at this one, getting maybe a little bit bigger, going through this wiggly thing, getting really, really big, until eventually it becomes this large radius loop that winds exactly n times around. The claim is there is a notion of winding number around the origin, and that that notion is independent of R, has to be independent of R. So this is what's called homotopy invariance. So claim there is a homotopy invariant which basically means invariant of this continuous parameter r that we're using to deform the loop. Notion of winding number which gives zero for the constant loop because it doesn't wind around the origin at all and it gives n for the large radius loop And therefore, n equals zero, because being homotopy invariant means independent of R. This is independent of deformations. I.e., independent of R. it gives 0, r equals 0, it gives n for large r, so it has to give n equals 0. So that proves the fundamental theorem of algebra subject to the existence of this homotopy invariant notion of winding number. So the rest of this course will basically be about defining this notion of winding number, the notion of homotopy and homotopy invariance, um, and generalizing it to other spaces. So more generally, the spaces we're interested in like in this example C minus the origin um, will have an associated group
in this case the integers, called the fundamental group. which is a receptacle for winding numbers of paths, but they're not numbers anymore, they're elements of a group. So loops will have winding numbers, but they're not numbers anymore, which live in this group. So this will allow us to prove a bunch of really cool things. So we'll be able to fill in the details of this, frankly, rather sketchy proof I've just given you of the fundamental theorem of algebra. But we'll also be able to prove things like the fact that the trefoil knot, this guy, is not unknottable. Not the same as the unknot, just a circle embedded in three-dimensional space. We'll be able to prove that the Borromean rings, which is something, maybe I'll be able to draw it, we'll see. Uh, so yeah. It's a, it's a configuration of three rings. There you go. I think that's right. Where you can't unlink all three of them, but you, if you remove one of them, you can you can unlink the other two. So this one and this one, for example, that third guy wasn't there you could just pull that one off this one um, so this is not equivalent to just having three separate rings right so this theorem this theorem will be able to prove by thinking about the non-abelian groups that you get by looking at uh, the complements of these knots and rings okay so that was just intended as a fun introduction to the topic in the next video, we'll start looking more rigorously at the definition of loops, encapsulation of loops, and the, trying to find the fundamental group.